this! Display no mercy! Hey everyone, Matt here with another Pure Nintendo video. As you can see, we are playing Xenoblade Chronicles. However, this series is a little bit different than our usual Let's Plays. In this series, we're going to be taking on the five super bosses, which are unique monsters which range from levels 100 to 120. Now before each fight, I'm going to talk to you about what you're going to be needing to stand a chance against these guys. There are different combinations you can use, but I'll be going for the one that works for me, which is Shulk, Dunban, and Melia. I also won't be using the topo lock strategy, in which you continuously inflict topo throughout the entire battle. I also haven't used New Game Plus, which allows you to keep your affinity coins and gain new ones from defeating the same unique monsters you've killed in the past. Of course, I'll be putting my money where my mouth is. After I explain what's what, other pure Nintendo staffers will join me as we take on these beasts. A lot of the info I found in taking these guys on came from the Xenoblade wiki. So go check that side out if I say something that you don't quite understand. Also, because these super bosses appear at the end of the game, I'll be putting a huge spoiler warning in right now. If you want the game spoiled for you, I recommend you leave and come back later. With that out of the way, let's get started. For the first bite, we'll be going up against Final Marcus, which is by far the easiest one of the group. I'll show you the equipment I have, but as long as you keep Final Marcus' spike aura sealed, you shouldn't have too much trouble, even with any other kind of equipment. Now, I've got the best weapon for each while still having three gem slots. You'll need all you can get in these fights. Again, check out the Xenoblade Wiki to see where you can get the Wavern Cutlass and the Sun Staff. Now, you'll notice everyone has a gem called Night Vision 5 equipped. These increase your accuracy at night, and are absolutely essential in the fights against the remaining four super bosses. 5 star central Bionis, then trade with Skyland and Satoru Marsh to grab these. While there are night vision 6 gems that you can get, I haven't needed them against these guys, so don't worry about it. You may also want agility down 5, which you can get from Warner after you 5 star colony 6. Another essential gem to have is Spike Defense 6, which increases your Spike Defense by 75%. You can grab the necessary level 5 crystals from Solare, Largo, and Shimai Cellulas inside the Bionis. Finally, make sure to max out your agility bonus through these gems. Your goal is to be able to hit your foes while not getting hit, and these actually do both at the same time. Finally, you won't need them now, but while you're out hunting, go ahead and get yourself some Divine Protection Crystals from Gogols and Satorial Marsh, and Unbeatable Crystals from Dinosauros in Machno Forest. After that, all you need to do is heat them up to level 6 gems. Now, I'm not going to cover how to get level 6 gems here, but if you want a video on that, I'll be happy to do it, just leave a comment below. Now, let's move on to skills and skill trees. I'm not going to go over every link, but I will tell you your goals. Aim for anything that helps agility, tension, the chain gauge, and reducing spike damage. That means you may need to go skill tree hunting and unique monster hunting. Melia also has a skill that reduces spike damage by 50%. Always a plus. You're also going to want to get Shulk's Bravery skill list. The final skill here allows an automatic talent gate refill every time you get a vision. This is pretty much essential because you're going to be getting vision tags left and right in these fights. 
I hope you've been leveling up your Monado arts to level 10, especially armor, purge, and shield. All these super bosses will have level 10 arts, so you're going to need a level 10 shield to counter. Monado speed also helps out, but mostly you want to be focused on the first three I mentioned. You're also going to want to level up Shadow Eye as much as possible. Sometimes hits and breaking vision tags will bring Shulk some unwanted attention. A level 10 Shadow Eye should be enough to remedy this. You'll need to worry about leveling up Dunban's physical arts and auras as much as you can, especially Jaws of Death. Death comes fast and merciless in these fights, and you're really going to need any buffer you can. Because I'm harping on accuracy so much, his serene heart is maxed out. I suggest you do the same. If I had Ryan as a party member, I'd also put in Heat Haze, but I don't. And Shulk can't handle aggro quite like Dunban or Ryan can. Most of Melia's usefulness comes from the buffs in battle and the sheer amount of damage she can help cause in chain attacks. Summon Bolt, Wind, Earth, and Aqua are all ready to go. I also have Mind Blast and the off chance that she can actually inflict Art Seal. Also, I happen to have the Spear Break and Starlight Kick combo ready just in case I need to topple somebody. Again, I'm not going for topple lock, but sometimes you need a break from the action. So, we're about to get started with our first fight. Now, because no one's perfect, you may see the action shift a bit, and suddenly, we're in the middle of a different battle. That's because I died horribly, but I am resolved to conquer these beasts. Don't worry, I won't leave out anything that will be essential to total victory. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get the show on the road. First up, Final Marcus. Completely forgot to mention this, but make sure you're prioritizing the right skill trees that you want. In my case, I put it all towards agility. Hey guys, welcome back. I just showed you everything you need to know to go up against the five bosses. This one's specifically Final Marcus. That's that guy right in the middle. He's the easiest one of the, uh, of the bunch. The only thing that makes him a little bit difficult is he has a spike aura, which we already dealt with in the, uh, in the pre-equipment checkup we went over. And these two guys right here, level 99, Gloria, Slobos. But if there's a blizzard, it just makes it even harder because there's a giant dragon that will come down and destroy you all. But luckily it's a nice, just a little bit of snow, so he won't come down to kill us. So without further ado, let's take on some final Marcus. Let's do it. Display it's right time. Oh wait, you don't have Ryan in the party. Nope. Ryan. I don't care about that guy. I only want this guy. Disappointing. Bam! Oh! I forgot to mention who's here! Well, it's me, Matt, behind the sticks. I'm also joined by Justin Sharp. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> the Katie's like, you're so fast. <laughs> Caleb Sharp is also here. Oh, you're supposed to say something. <laughs> and Alex Shrenke is also here. Hey everybody, what's going on? That was a virtual nug. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Let's immediately go into chain attacking. Nice, nice. We're already losing. By killing this guy. Because he's not far away. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, really, you have to go and beat them up. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were in my way. Yeah. They're just hanging out, you know? You know, you know, it's funny you mentioned that, Alex. Uh, I don't know why, but when I play Monster Hunter, I feel bad for the monsters. <laughs> oh, no. Like, I, I, I don't know what it is, but I don't know. The the monster designs in Xenoblade ne never feel bad. Well, these guys go for you, especially those unique monsters. <clears throat> and yeah. that nebulous guy. Mm -hmm. I think, like, part of the problem in Monster Hunter, like... Like there's just a there's just a you know like a dinosaur basically like grazing and you're like man you're extinct and you're just chilling out just trying to grab some food and I'm suddenly out here and just whack. Yeah. 
I, I really don't feel good. I, I kind of feel guilty about the ones that are just kind of grazing along. And you just go on. Man. Yeah. Well, there's some social commentary for you. Yeah. Most of yeah. Animal, most animal cruelty. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think for me, it's when um, you're fighting the big monsters, and then like you wound them to that point where they start running away, and they're like limping. So it's like, oh, come on, don't do that, man. I'm like so half paying attention to this guy. <laughs> also, I like how there's a guy in the back. He wants to know part of what's going on here. <laughs> so he's the pacifist. Yeah. Like you're on your own, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I thought this guy had the level 10 uh, arts. Whatever. <laughs> Just like, like whatever, I'm still handling looking this. And this. he's dead. Really? What? That was, that was like five minutes, four minutes, maybe. Oh, yeah. Matt, you're too good. It took longer to find Final Marcus than to actually <laughs> fight him. <laughs> Final Marcus is the easy one. A moment of silence for Final Marcus. Yeah. Freezing Nate, Alcor Staff, Yellow Rock, Slobos Crystal. Bill. I really don't feel bad. I, I don't know. I think his his character design. I don't know. Maybe he's just too ugly. Maybe I, I that's why I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, we'll leave this guy to tell the others. Leave, leave <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. When the others appear. Choke the destroyer. Yes. <laughs> Look at all those chests. Those are all guys who got in my way. <laughs> I think it was grazed. Anyway. I'd love, I'd love to see this, this boss fight from their perspective. It was a massacre. It just came through. There was no warning. It's these three heroes, all this upgraded weapons, and we were just hanging out. This little girl just kicked me, and I went down. I don't understand it. I'm 40 feet tall. She's like eight, or she's like two feet tall. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, Fred, he didn't even aggro on him, and he's just hanging out over there. I mean, he's not even, he's not even attacking him. Where, yeah, where was he contributing to all of this while his friends were getting slaughtered in front of him? <laughs> <laughs> Fred, man. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> so, that was Final Marcus. I hope you guys enjoyed, but don't get too comfortable, because he was the easiest one. There's actually a debate on Xenoblade Wiki right now of whether or not he should be considered a final super boss. Ooh, insult to injury. He's over 99. <laughs> That's the only classification they had. That's all you need to know. Be sure to stay tuned for episode two while we fight an Italian robot. Until then, we'll see you all next time. See ya. Bye. Bye Adios. Guys.